Well, I was brought up in a Christian home and taught from a young age that, that God was with me and that I can trust him. Throughout everything, growing up, working, getting married, having a family, all those things, um, yeah, I was just getting on with life and its ups and downs. One of the downs for me was being diagnosed with cancer and going through a long process of uh, surgery, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. Throughout all this time, my faith remained strong, my faith in God. I benefited hugely from the support and prayers of family and friends all, all through that, that difficult treatment. Um, thankfully, the, the treatment was successful and I was well on the way, road to recovery. However, unbeknown to me, I had a hidden side effect from the chemotherapy. Um, I was just getting on with my life um, and it was all ticking along nicely. I was fit and healthy, but my trust in God was about to be put to the test by a life-threatening incident. Without warning, I suffered a massive haemorrhage, a big bleed. Um, I was rushed to hospital in an ambulance and needed intravenous fluids, um, but the doctors struggled to, to get those fluids into me. Um, it would work initially, but then it failed and they kept having to repeat the process. Uh, it turns out that the chemotherapy that I'd had for the cancer had damaged my veins. Um, so that's why they couldn't um, get the fluid lines in. Um, I was given drugs to control the bleeding and after an hour or so uh, was admitted to a ward. I realised that what had happened to me was very serious and I could have died. Um, but I felt peaceful and knew that God was with me. I'd been on the ward for a short while before it all kicked off again. Uh, the drugs had stopped working and I had another massive bleed. I lost so much blood this time that my blood pressure plummeted and my heart rate was sky high and the crash team were called. I was surrounded by at least eight medical staff who were fighting to keep me alive. I had to be resuscitated. I was laid on my back with my arms out to the sides while the doctors tried uh, to establish the fluid lines. My veins collapsed repeatedly. I was just totally helpless. But I felt calm and knew that God was with me. When all this was going on, I didn't feel any pain at all. Uh, I've since been told that this was because my body was shutting down and focusing on my major organs rather than on the superficial pain. Uh, one of the crash team uh, was a matron. Her job was to hold my hand and to keep me talking, to help keep me conscious. But I found that I couldn't talk. Uh, it took too much concentration and you have to think to talk. So bizarrely, I don't know why, I told her I would sing instead. I found myself singing a couple of hymns over and over again. Um, I think it was the, the rhythm and the rhyme and the, the pattern of the words um, and the verses that, that helped me to remember the words and concentrate, take my mind off things, I suppose. Uh, so under my oxygen mask, I was singing to God. I knew that he was there and listening. The uh, medical staff must have thought I was completely mad though, I, goodness knows what they thought. But I was communicating with God and knew that he was with me. Um, once things had stabilised, I was taken to the high dependency unit and over the next few hours I was given five units of blood but continued to be very unstable with a cycle of bleed, crash, resuscitation, recurring a further three times. I was conscious a lot of the time and can tell things were getting very dangerous and death did cross my mind, um, but I felt God close. He never left me. I needed emergency surgery, but it wasn't safe straight away um, as they were running out of blood and needed more to be sent down from Sheffield. Also, the consultant wanted her top team there with her rather than the rookie surgeons that were on duty that night. So the crash team stayed with me and kept me alive until the surgical team were all in place the next morning. Um, at one point I asked the doctors what my chances were. They all looked round at one another and then one of them said, it depends how it goes in surgery, we'll do our best. Well, at 8.30 a.m., that's 13 hours after I was initially admitted, I was taken to theatre. At this point I knew I was going to die. I could feel my life slipping away. I was just really weak. Um, but I remember talking to God on the operating table before they anaesthetised me. Um, and it went something like this. Father, I'm, I'm so tired now. 
I don't think I'm ready to die and my family cert re certainly aren't ready to lose me but it's up to you it's your decision uh, I trust you with whatever you decide I felt calm and very much at peace the operation was challenging and the surgeons struggled to stop the bleeding. Throughout the incident, uh, I received 21 units of blood. That's about nine and a half litres, so quite a lot. Um, I had five units of platelets and some plasma as well. So thanks very much to all those blood donors out there. 36 hours later, I woke up in intensive care. Apparently the first thing I said was, I'm not dead then. Over the next few weeks, I made a full recovery. I felt liberated by the near-death experience. I'd experienced God being so close to me through it all and felt that he had decided that I should live. That all happened it was about four years ago now and life has continued to have ups and downs as it does. Uh, there's still lots of difficult stuff to deal with, lots of challenges to face, uh, but having a real relationship with God and knowing that he's with me through it all gives me a great sense of peace. I know God's with me and that he has a plan for my life and I trust him with that.